Welcome to the show that focuses on Mother Africa. And this week, we take a look at inspirational messages from so many guests and panelists that we've hosted over the past year. You're watching the Africa Leadership Dialogues. I'm Julie Gishuro. On the show this week, we take a moment to look back and take the insights that are inspirational for the people of this continent, for the leadership on the continent, the insights that tell us how exactly we can contribute towards growing the continent, that show us examples of people who've actually done it. Let's have a look at some of our many panelists, many guests over the past year who have been constructive in their engagement with the Africa Leadership Dialogues. My vision for Africa is that because Africa is so blessed with material and natural resources, so blessed with 50% of its population being women, so blessed with our land, because we have 60% of our land lying fallow. My vision for Africa is that we use what we have to get what we need. And that is to make use of all those things that God has blessed us with and use them properly so that God can help us to take, what, take Africa to the next level. It is our turn, and our turn is now. Leaders, stop taking our thoughts and our lives for granted. They are not. They are complex, peculiar formations that have taken millennia, thousands of years to evolve in Africa. We are different in the way we look at things and in the way that we innovate and solve our problems. And unless you are looking at what is going on, picking up the pieces, and finding out ways to create new tapestries, you are going to continue to exert your best efforts and get very, very limited results. Don't ever give up on your dreams. Don't ever allow anybody to tell you that you cannot make it. Surround yourself with like-minded individuals, people that will help you, mentors, people that will guide you and give you the assistance that you need and to the leaders of this great continent. Understand that you are working for your people. You are working to create a better place for the children who are not yet born. So please, make sure you are working for your people and not for your family. That is not what you are here for as a leader of Africa. First and foremost, I think the leaders need to have a, a, a much larger sense of what leadership is, what their responsibility is to serve. I mean, they're public servants and they don't look after the public. We see so much working for me, 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 and not working for the people. So if you were really working for the people, you would be thinking, first and foremost, how can I make sure they have an education? How can I make sure that there's equity at all levels of the society mm -hmm. so that we open up opportunities for people? Because I do think that we have a incredible youth who are very gifted in Kenya. And, um, but it is the case that, you know, whether it's being marginalized or whatever, people don't want to um, give of themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, so the, some, the rich can only understand that enough is not enough. So I think that whole, again, we were talking before, mentality. There needs to be a mentality shift and a realization that y you have a responsibility. If you're in a position of leadership, that's what, when you have to give it away. For the young people of Africa and for all Africans, uh, there is everything in us to overcome our challenges. And this, in this particular case of Rwanda, 
if Rwanda can overcome our tragic history and situation and make some decent uh, progress, I think other African people and uh, countries can do it and can even do it better. I believe Africa is on the rise, and I think even as Africa is on the rise, Africa should rise with its people. Africa should rise with its women. And I believe that this is time for women of Africa to not only demand that they be given, you know, responsibilities and power, but also to lead, you know, and even as we are saying we are leading, we are really claiming power, you know, because again, if you're given power, it can easily be taken away from you. But when you claim power, you own it. There's enough power for all of us. When I am um, powerful, it doesn't mean you have to be weak. We can all be powerful people. In fact, you want a powerful woman because then you live in peace because you don't have the burden of sorting out everything. Women have now realized that they should not remain in the basement. They should not remain in the kitchen. They should not be a subject of the bedroom. Women have realized that they're actually more useful in the boardrooms, more useful in parliament, and uh, in any position of leadership. That is a very powerful tool for us. We have acknowledged that, and we have decided to take uh, the challenges and to move with it. So much power has been given to the men, so that's why sometimes the girls or the women are considered as the weaker sex. So I think it is now time for us to focus more on the girls. Enough has been given to the boys, or maybe you can say, you can just give them little more. But I think now we should really have to focus on the girls because they've been left out in the past. Even if they are not on the same level, they can be moving at the same pace. So that some people will be left behind. Yeah. You might be an adolescent girl or an adolescent boy. I just want you to know that we have the same mentality. We think the same. We should never feel different. And if we believe in ourselves and we put these thoughts together, all these things, I know the things, you, the ambitions you have, you might think it's for you alone, nobody feels. But I feel what you feel. And if we can come together, then we'll achieve so much. And I just want you to know that you're never, you're never alone, and we're all together in this. I believe that um, girls need to have mentors, or like role models, someone they look up to in their society, someone that is close to them. You know, when you have, um, I believe that, like, um, I have someone I look up to, so whenever I have a problem or I need something, like, it's on my mind, and I feel maybe if I speak out at home, nobody really listen to me, or even if I'm listening to, nothing will be done about it. You know, and like if I talk to my mentor or my role model, you know, she can like come and speak to my parents, you know, because she's an adult, they'll see things at her, uh, in her own perspective. Well, even though it's my idea, but you know, but they're going to agree with her. So I believe that people in society need to mentor many girls. You don't have to be related to a girl to be her mentor, but um, if, you, if there are many mentors in the society, many girls, I think won't be in so much trouble, you know, because some girls, they don't really like seek for trouble themselves, but because they don't have anybody to talk to, so nobody listens to what they are, so they do things that end up making, the, uh, they do things that end up being a problem for them. But you know, when they speak out, when they speak to someone before they do anything, you know, they get advice and stuff like it that. It's going them. to help, yes, someone to guide them. It's very good. I yeah. think societies need to encourage us. I think first of all, as Africans, we must truly believe in ourselves. That for me is one of the most important things about this continent. Um, we are very capable, and the strange thing about Africa is that we are a lot more similar than we are different. That is one thing we have to realize. If you went to marry a girl in Kenya and went to marry a girl in Nigeria or South Africa, you'd go through the same process. Different languages, different dress, dresses, but you'd go through the same process. And I think there's great value in us doing that. But critical for our, our future is how we harness the power we have in our young people, how we change our attitudes towards young people, how we stop being dismissive of young people because we just think they're young people and culturally we've got a bias towards saying, or oh, young people, as you said, should be heard. Not See, not heard. Since not heard. And I think 
we have a huge asset in the young people of the continent, which if we do a good job at, could be a huge asset to the continent. But if we don't, it will be a major liability for us. And the message to Africa is, ask yourself as a young, as an, even as an older African, how many young people are tagging onto your trousers wanting to be like you? What are you doing differently for the young people in your church, in your community, your nieces, your nephews, to inspire them to go beyond what you have achieved? That is the message likely for the continent. We're taking a break right now, but we come back to so much more. Don't go away. You're watching the Africa Leadership Dialogues. Stay with the Africa Leadership Dialogues. Welcome back to the Africa Leadership Dialogues. Time for more inspiration. How can we grow Mother Africa? Let's listen. First and foremost, it is upon each one of us to question where do we want our generations to be. We would want our generation to find a sustainable economic model that guarantees security of their wealth for themselves and for their children. We can't do that if we don't fight corruption. Corruption takes away everything that we thought could be good for our people. It allocates resources wrongly. It defies every economic, every economic language. And more than that, it de destroys the human inertia and creates inequality that is so grealing today. For the youth, don't give up. You are the custodian of our economy. You are the custodian of our democracy. You are literally the asset for the future. However, please condone or do not ever, ever accept corruption, whether it is by yourself, whether it's by your dad. Challenge the status quo. Read as much. Don't heal or worship money. Heal or worship knowledge, knowledge, knowledge that you are God. And be truthful to yourself because integrity will take you to the mountain top. Remember, if one of us servers, we all serve. And I say in economics in Africa, the damage we have is not to have corrected the mistakes fighting corruption earlier. We have failed the youth, but don't give up on us. We'll do our best. Thank you very much. When it comes to African leadership, it starts with oneself. First of all, it starts with the point that you are the solution. When we realize that we are the solution, when we realize that we are the biggest resource to our continent is when we shall take that step forward. Secondly, to all governments, if you have a social or any youth council in your government framework and there is no person who is under the age of 30, then you're going wrong. If you do not have any framework for the youth to have a platform to do humanitarian work, environment, wildlife, music, entertainment, arts and culture, sports. If you have no framework for the youth in any class, in any ethnic group, if you have no framework for that, then you are starving the youth from doing what they do best, being innovative, creative, and being the leaders of today. Are we going to keep on complaining? Or are we going to take our butt off and do something. And that's where the volunteerism will come. There's no four million jobs available today, neither the government, neither the private sector. So first, are you prepared to get up in the morning and do something for this country? Dig a hole and put up a, a plant, go to the school, help them to clean up. Go to your, are you prepared to do anything? All you are prepared to do is to just debate, speak your mind. But when it comes to doing things, why should Manu Chandaria go and clean Korogocho? Tell me. We have enough youth who can do it. So I think the basic issue is that st stop debating, stop issuing how difficult the times are. Times are always going to be difficult. When I started my life, there were 40 people working. And six of us, 40 people, we built an empire, 40,000 people, 45 countries. It is doable. It was doable for me, it can be doable for you. 
I think my advice to, to young people is, is you're not entitled to anything and take any opportunity you get and see what is the positive thing in this opportunity. It might be at the very bottom and that's really where one needs to start. It's, it's to learn. The second thing is to have confidence. I see this with a lot of uh, the young people we recruit in, uh, in Kenya, in Uganda, in Tanzania. They're very, they're very talented, they're very good. But many of them don't have the confidence and the belief that they are very good. And therefore, they do not want to venture outside their comfort zone. Uh, many of them are not uh, comfortable uh, taking risks. And you know, there's, I don't know this education system, many people are afraid to fail. And I think the fear of failure holds many of us of us back. It's a very interesting moment for Africans, especially young Africans, in that young Africans are now inheriting much larger pools of scientific and technical knowledge than their predecessors had access to. Uh, the story of mobile phones, you can replicate that in so many other fields where knowledge is expanding really fast. The most important thing is that uh, young people will need to equip themselves with the capacity to absorb that knowledge. And that has implications on the subjects that they choose to study. That those countries that are steering more of their young people to study the sciences are going to be basically the beneficiaries of this century and even possibly the next one. And so I see already many African countries that are starting to increase the number of universities, technical universities. Those are the countries that have the vision and that are preparing their leaders, the next generation of leaders, to really capture the benefits of being late comers. If we are able to collaborate between employers and the educational sector and build the right kinds of partnerships, it will be possible both for the private sector to cut the costs of their human capital development because they're getting people who are ready for the workplace and for education to very clearly convert into meaningful and sustainable jobs. But that requires us rethinking the idea that the university dons and syllabus setters sit in one room and the employers sit in another room. Mm -hmm. They need to sit in one room and say, what are we doing to give people the experiences they need over the duration of their life that prepare them for the workplace and create the workforce of the future. Over, over time, more and more, the idea is slipping into ourselves as, new, as Africans to say that, look, we have to, uh, it's what I call the positive arrogance of Africans now. We have this positive arrogance that, you know, we can do this, you know, there's no reason why our colleagues from Latin America or from South Asia or Southeast Asia, what have you, are able to lift themselves out of poverty and we can't. There's nothing wrong with us. God has given us the same enable rights as everybody else and we as intelligent, we as you know, we're smart and everything else. So we need to take the bull by the horns ourselves and start doing that. And I think you're seeing more and more of that um, either at the very individual level and also through the, through the collective force of Africans who are not waiting for others to do something for them, but doing it themselves. Angi manyalo wacho, mono jo Kenya, wakonya konya Kenya msima wabedu kachiel, gikwe gilamu. To wakony pin, nyitindo, wakony, Jomon tie wabed gi chuny ma nyasaye nikech gi momi aneno nyo pinyo konya konya ngato ok ni kata ka koro akonyo jini anma mara ma nyasaye to chuny ma ngo ni no kasomo to mi nya odie chuoyo gudu to kasomo kisumo kenda chaka di mo university ay the certificate mara to na wa chuny Neki chuny ma ber en gi ma ber. Ki konyo nga togo nso eru kamano o me dindalo. Mana kamano wabed gi kwe mono wachak mna gero pinyo ane. Wasongo no sewe no ane Kenya en mara Afrika. Koro Afrika bongi mna kaka loso yi tijigini. Wamaku wamaka gi hera wambi wati. Yomane rulo anowe no ane mano marwa. Korwambe wangi kaka dua timarwa. Mana kamane gimaneno. The confidence we must have in ourselves and in, and in our continent. Uh, we must believe that truly Africa is rising. And uh, of course the rising should be uh, on the backs of good governance. Good governance should be inclusive. Uh, we shouldn't allow, I uh, say, things like religion or tribe 
or gender uh, to come in the way of uh, our entitlements as citizens uh, who should be equal before the law as our constitutions provide and, and also uh, in the path of our economic development. Um, for a long time, Africa was subjugated and its peoples became like second class people around the world. Now Africa is moving and Africans are truly the equals of any human beings anywhere. We must believe in the universality of man. I think the resources of Africa are so, so extensive that with um, better management, which I think is coming rapidly, Africa will become a very powerful nation, uh, continent. Um, powerful not in a militaristic sense, but in terms of an econ eco economic hothouse, a place where things can be made, things can be sold, new ideas can be developed. The intellectual um, bank in Africa, amongst the younger people with a better education, is, is beyond belief. And we all admire what's happened in the tiger countries of the East. We all used to admire what happened in Europe, what happened in America. It'll happen here, and when it does, it'll be an African experience. It'll be something we're doing. But we've got to give the next generation a better chance of being able to move rapidly by not squandering what we have and giving them not a mess to inherit, but a potential to inherit. African brothers and sisters, let us believe in ourselves. Nobody needs to tell you, you know, you go all over the world and they, they may have different ideas about Africa. Whatever ideas they have, those are their ideas. We Africans should know who we are and we should know that what we are, what we embody within ourselves, no amount of money in the world can buy it. And if we have the confidence in ourselves, there's nobody that can put us down. It is time now to lift Africa, to join the rest of the world in the place where it belongs. Africa has given the, its wealth to build up the wealth of the world. In our generation, in our time, our wealth will be used to build up our own wealth for our own people, even as we join the rest of the world as equal partners. And you and me and all of us are the ones that are going to write that story. Let nobody tell you who you are. You claim your destiny and you live it. We have had the benefit, the privilege, of hosting some amazing guests on this show, of sharing their wisdom and their insight, of sharing your insights as well as you shared your views with us. And we thank you all for being part of the conversation. How can we grow this continent? What role can each of us play? As always, we close with a powerful quote or proverb. It is a proverb this time, and it goes, you should know what's being cooked in the kitchen, otherwise you might eat a forbidden food. As you celebrate this week, are you keeping an eye on what's being cooked in the kitchen? And as Africa plans to move forward, are we keeping an eye on what's going on in the various different kitchens? Blessings to you and blessings 